Good morning, everyone. This is Gary Aura, Chief Architect and AWS Ambassador. And uh, the topic that I'm covering is very much what I operate in on a day-to-day -day basis, serverless, cloud-native, open-source development, cloud engineering, are really my focus areas. Having spent a lot of time in developing these solutions, one thing I've noticed is there's a lot of breadth. Pretty much everyone knows what serverless is and maybe even how to get started. But it's the depth that often gets overlooked in terms of what it takes to create production-grade serverless solutions between getting started and being able to deploy a production-grade app. And that's precisely what I want to cover. So this really won't be a serverless 101 session. We will touch on the construct a little bit, and then we'll get deep into degrees of complexity, some bells and whistles, some demos, everything that is required for a production-grade app. This is the only 101 slide, and I pulled this because it really simplifies what serverless is, especially when compared with your traditional non-serverless server-based solutions that you can run on a VM in a data center. So this is really a spectrum in terms of the, the different architecture patterns. And within these patterns, the only thing different between serverless and non-serverless is the abstraction in terms of the operational uh, elements. Use cases, I'm sure this is also very familiar terrain. The most popular ones are the web apps and the backends creating uh, microservices-driven applications. Then you also have your data processing, chatbots if you are on a cooler project, Alexa if you're on an even cooler project, and some of the IoT um, and IT automation work that we do. So with that, I do want to get into some demos. I have some demos carved out. This is the most common use case for serverless on AWS. It's microservice with a database, a thin compute layer, and an API gateway all plugged in to do anything that you want to do in that compute layer with that data source that you get. So you have DynamoDB, Lambda, API gateway. Let me just show you real quick uh, what that kind of looks like. This is our dashboard for DynamoDB. I have a table here. In that table, I have these five rows. I was looking for um, free data that I can pull, and the only thing that I could find was an alcohol inventory. This just works like a product inventory for any kind of retail store. You have descriptions, your pricing, and things like that, so you know how many you have. So that's your uh, DB layer. Then this DB is hooked with our Lambda. So as you can see, this is really tiny Lambda, just not even 20 lines. And all it does is goes into that table inventory. And uh, depending on whatever you ask for, whichever item you ask for, it just provides that item back in a response. So if we were to test this out, I have a test event here where I've provided a number, 904616. You can go back in my um, database and see that this one, Travis Apple Pie, come in here, and I can run this, and I get that back. But this is Lambda itself. Then I have this Lambda hooked up with uh, an API gateway endpoint, and that's also very straightforward. I just have a get endpoint on root. Not a best practice, but it's just for the purpose of demo. And all this does is connects to that Lambda, and I can actually test this out as well. So I would use the same uh, item number, and I can just get it from here, and zero four. And I'm able to get the same thing here. Now, API Gateway is the last thing that lives on AWS. I can now deploy this and take this to any of my apps. In this case, I have Postman that's up and running, where I provide the right value, and send this out, I'm able to get the same thing. So this is a simple microservice, and that's really the highlight, that uh, getting into serverless with creating uh, you know, your first app is so quick, and you can create a, a multi-component uh, microservice uh, application. So the speed to get started and deploy is just insane. It's hard to replicate that in any other kind of architecture, which is why serverless is so popular. But this is not production ready, right? So what I've showed you is good to get started, but this is not ready for prime time. What is it missing? Well, the main thing it's missing is that I just created them by going on the console and creating each component individually, which means it's not packaged as one solution. And each component, DynamoDB or Lambda or API Gateway, as their own kind of integration that you have to set. So for, for DynamoDB, it's my read and write. For my Lambda, I have a whole bunch of configuration, including uh, the permissions. So I created an IAM role, including uh, how much time it should run, timeout, uh, where it should be running. So I've given it a timeout of three seconds, 
how much memory it should have. These are all configurations that you have to think through when you're creating these services. Same for API Gateway. I have set up some mapping here to make sure I'm getting the right kind of output. And they are all created individually, which means if I were to make an error in something or if I had to replicate this stack, I will need a really long run book to make sure I'm doing all of this right. So let's now look into what would it take to make this uh, production ready, which is really the purpose of this session. So here are a couple of things. I've just grouped it into three categories so that we don't create this by hand. We can create this as a package solution and have all the bells and whistles that we need to run this securely. First off, we need a framework and tools. We absolutely need that because they bring a level of standardization and consistency along with speed. In this example, in the demo, we only had one Lambda, so we didn't have to, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal, but if we had 10 Lambdas or 100 Lambdas with each uh, configuration option, it's going to be really hard to uh, maintain that. So using framework and tools, you can um, pretty much write your infrastructure as code. And there are a lot of options. I'm going to cover some of them. There are some that AWS provides, like SAM, Serverless Application Model, Cloud Dev Kit, Amplify. I'm going to touch on those. There are some uh, third-party uh, vendors out there as well, and they work just as well. Serverless Framework, Sparta, you can use any of those. Second is CICD. That's really the key here, because you have so many components here in serverless architecture compared to your traditional monolithic you know, architectures, which is just one big unit. You need to have a whole bunch of automation done here so that you're not only automating on the build, but you're also automating on testing and uh, deploying it using any of these options. First three are AWS options, next two are third-party open source options. And finally, and this is the most important piece that is most overlooked, setting up of monitoring, logging, and uh, diagnostics. I think it's because the high from creating your first serverless and just getting started really quick is so exciting that nobody wants to do the dirty work of setting this up. But this is really the distinguishing factor between your Hello World serverless app and your production-ready serverless app. Are you able to locally develop your serverless app, monitor it, troubleshoot it, and these are the other tools that you can use there. It's important that uh, when you have the serverless app with so many different components, individual components, they are treated as one single unit so that you deploy them together. If you had to roll back, you roll back them together. And of course, if you had to delete them, you delete them at the same time. So all the little pieces, the policies, the IAM rows, and the different lambdas and uh, your dynamos and your API gateway, all of that needs to come in as one unit. So this is how we make it happen. So I'm going to just kind of show you how we can get started on a few of these. OK, so two things I want to cover. One is the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio, which is a relatively new product. It further simplifies some of the, the automation that we have to do to make this simpler. And AWS SAM. Again, I'm just using SAM as an example, but you can use anything. SAM is really powerful. It allows you to do local development, which is a huge win because you don't want to push this to on AWS Cloud to test your Lambda functions and your Dynamo connections. You want to do that on your local machine before you push it out, especially if you have a lot of people working on the same code. Also, suppose API Gateway out of box. You can Dockerize your Lambda DynamoDB images. You can mimic the uh, AWS environment for the most part locally, including some of the limitations uh, in terms of timeouts and memory, so you know what kind of memory you need for the kind of application that you're creating. Of course, you can also see logs. And the whole idea is that you are able to build a lot of this, the native dependencies locally. So let me just show you a couple of things. So Sam has just a few commands. You can initialize a new project. You can uh, package it up. You can deploy it up. And normally, the way you would do this is you just do Sam in it. You spell it right, and it's going to just go through uh, like a wizard, and it's going to ask you, you know, how you want to do it. But we're not going to do that. I'm going to get out of it. We have the toolkit. So I want to show you what the toolkit can do. So I'm going to open up the uh, Visual Studio code that I have, and I've already installed this toolkit. It's an extension, so you can just go um, extensions here and just grab it and install it and configure it. But what it gives you is this little tab option where it uh, just kind of shows you the environment that you have running on cloud. I've configured this to show just the um, 
California region because I don't have anything else running there except for this demo. So it's a lot cleaner. And so I can see what I have going on in my uh, California region. I got some cloud formation templates. I got some lambdas. Uh, this is the fetch inventory lambda that we just saw a second ago. And don't think I have any step functions running. Right. So this is part of the toolkit that uh, AWS offers. Let me show one other thing before we get into Sam. So this is my Lambda that we just saw. I can actually just invoke this from my VS Code right here and while the Lambda is running in cloud. The only thing I need is my um, test event. So I can just go in my Lambda and here's the test event that I know worked. So I can just copy that, paste it here and I can invoke it. And I get the exact same result. So I'm essentially able to run my Lambdas that live on cloud uh, just from my local. But that's not what we want to do. We want to run Lambda locally. So for that, we have to use SAM. And uh, we can use the same toolkit to um, make this a little bit easier for us. So you have the option here to come in and just say, create a new SAM application. So it saves you uh, memorizing some of the YAML commands and uh, you know, just some of the syntax that uh, just feeds it up for you. And I'm sure this uh, toolkit will only get a lot more improvements as we go forward. When you do that, the first thing it's going to ask you is uh, what kind of runtime you want. I like Node.js, so I'm just going to go with that. Application template, hello world is good enough for me. Where do you want to put it? Let me just give a location for this. Let's say demo file. Okay. All right. Now it's going to create a SAM application for me, and it tells me here that it has added one folder. So I can now go into my folder explorer, and I can see what it has done for me. So this is the SAM template that this toolkit has created for me. It's essentially run the same commands on CLI that I would have if I didn't have this toolkit. So let's see, just dig into this. This is my function. So these are the resources. It's created a hello world function for me right here. It's telling me where it lives. It lives in a folder called hello world. So I can go in there and check it out. The runtime is Node.js. It's telling me that the timeout that it's given is three seconds because that's what I had uh, default. But if I want, wanted to update that to, let's say, 30 seconds, if I am expecting that kind of workload, I can just configure that here. Not only it has created a Lambda function for me, it has also created an API gateway endpoint. And it has mapped that to the Lambda function. So all the steps that you would manually do on the console, it has done that already. That's it. It hasn't created anything else. I, still, I would still need a DynamoDB. But for the purposes of this demo, this is sufficient. Now let's look at the Lambda code that it's created for me. So this is my Lambda function, pretty straightforward. All it does is returns a hello world. Um, and I think that's good enough. But here is where I want you to focus. This toolkit also allows these uh, commands that I can run directly. I can run this locally, I can debug this locally, and I can configure it. And that's the power of SAM and this toolkit that you're able to debug and run a lot of this before you even push it to cloud. So I just clicked on uh, run locally. And what it's doing behind the scene is just creating a Docker container image because your Lambda is running on that and it's running it and it's invoking the function. It, this is such a small function that it just executed. So all it does is returns a hello world. So if I had a lot more complicated function, I'd be able to just run it here and um, just kind of test it out. So the next thing I'm going to do is click on configure. And configure is the settings for Lambda. So what is the event that I'm passing to Lambda? So right now I'm passing nothing, but I should be passing, you know, maybe an API gateway response here uh, or a request here that Lambda can then understand. So where do I get the payload that I need to pass to my Lambda? I could look it up or I could also tell Sam to create a sample payload for me, which then I can change the value of. So I'm going to do that. I think this is going to be smaller here. So I'm going to do it on my, this one, which I've kind of enlarged. And the way you do that is Sam, local, you generate event, and I kind of had that written out already. And all you say is generate event, API gateway, AWS proxy, and it generates that event. So this is what gets passed to Lambda from API gateway. There's a lot of stuff in here. The stuff that we care about is uh, right here. So if we had a, this is a get call, and this uh, is the query string parameter that we are passing. In this case, it's just full bar. We can change it to whatever we want. So this entire payload is what we need to add here. I can just copy this and paste it, or I can just use the Linux property of um, TV copy, and let's just uh, 
pasteboard and it just copies the whole thing for me in my clipboard. I can come in here and paste it. Okay, and I've formatted it. So now the event that I'm tapping is this entire thing where the most important aspect, the one that I care about, is this query string parameter who and bar. That's where you tell your Lambda for a specific instruction, go fetch this item and, and go do that. That's how you do events. Let me show you one other thing, local debugging. That's another highlight of uh, SAM. Local debugging, this is just like you do debugging in your normal uh, application. I'm just gonna come in here. Okay, this is uh, just for a console log because that's the best way to test stuff, faster to test stuff. And I, what I'll do is I'll put a breakpoint in here. And now I want to debug this locally. So I will just click on debug this locally. And it's doing whatever it needs to do behind the scene. Actually, I should have saved it. Uh, didn't save it, but now it's, I think it's gonna still do the debugging, but it's not gonna show me that console. And now the debugger has been attached, debugger is running. I can just continue and see what are the different stops that the debugger comes through. The next stop is this Lambda. And as you can see, the console.log is not uh, visible here because I didn't save it before I ran this, but it's still, Stopped right here, and I can just hover on the event, and I can see what was the event that was coming in, and I can see the query string parameters, who bar, this is where it's coming in. So if I, if I wanted to debug my Lambda to understand what kind of request was coming in from API Gateway, this is how I could do all of that uh, debugging locally. And that's really important, which means we were actually pushing code to Lambda on cloud, and then testing it there, going through the CloudWatch logs. And that takes a long time. Also, when you have multiple people working on it, it can get messy. So this is the right way to do it, where you make sure your code is working properly and then you push it forward. All right, so I'm just gonna stop the number here and I can see that even in the debugger, I got my response that I wanted. Then one other thing you can do is you can build this out and I can build out this function and it tells me it's it's all built, it's ready to be deployed. So build includes the verification and I can just use this spam deploy guided. And it kind of guides me in terms of what the cloud stack, cloud formation template stack name should be and which region I want to deploy. I won't do this now because the deployment can take a minute or two the first time because it's creating the package in S3 and deploying it. I already did this earlier, so I can just show you what that output looks like. This is the cloud formation template that it creates. And now the API Gateway and the Lambda and whatever logic that I had is all tied into one unit, which means if I had to update this, I can do it together. If I had to delete this, I can just delete the template and delete everything that it has created for me. And what are the things that it created for me? So I can just go into resources and I can see what are the different resources that this template created for me. So I got the hello world function, which is a Lambda function. I also got a Lambda permission created. I got IAM role created. I got the API gateway created, then the deployment. I got the API gateway to be deployed and uh, be ready on the stage as well. So these are the different uh, elements it created for me. And if I wanted, I could simply just delete it all or continue to upgrade this and I can see the uh, status of this. I can also come in here and actually see the Lambda code that it added for me. So that's Sam, that's how you automate and stitch together your individual components into a single unit and you get closer and closer to your production readiness. This is an example. So the basic demo that we saw earlier with DynamoDB, if we had to convert that into the SAM template to be as one unit, so that's the architecture you have on the right, then what would it take? This is the SAM code. This is the amount of SAM code it would take to create a DynamoDB table. So let's just look at this from top to bottom. You got your, the first two lines is just standard. It's telling cloud permission template that this is a SAM and you need to treat it as such. The second line here is Lambda configuration. So this is where I'm saying I need it for 30 seconds, not for three. And if I needed any other global configuration items here, I would put it right here. This is where I'm telling that I need an AWS Lambda function created. It needs to have a Node.js 12 version runtime. It needs to have a policy created. So do that for me. That policy needs to have DynamoDB read-only access and that Lambda needs to be connected to an API gateway at root with the method of get, right? So it's, it's integrating and all of the mapping and permission that are required for API gateway to talk to Lambda, it's doing all of that in just these uh, connections. And then finally, I'm also telling AWS that I need a DynamoDB table created 
the name should be inventory and the primary key should be item number. And I run that and it actually creates the exact same architecture that I created and presented for the demo earlier. Okay, I got one more demo and this is the production grade demo. This is the title of the presentation. So I want to show that this is an end-to-end -end airline booking system. This is what it looks like. Let's talk through some of the features before I show you the demo. It's a three-tier app. The web interface, there's a back end, there's also a data store. But on the web interface, you have these features. You're able to log in. You're able to sign up new users. You have a profile. You're able to set your preferences there, your dietary requirements and your luggage and those kind of things. This is a travel booking app. So you're able to search through flights. You are able to book them. And you're also able to do your mock payments through uh, Stripe. That integration piece I haven't completed, but <laughs> you're able to do that. And finally, you also have the loyalty points. So this is a complete uh, application. All right, this is the architecture. So just top to bottom, front end is just Vue.js Amplify. That's another one that I didn't touch, but it was on my uh, list of frameworks. Amplify is a great framework if you want to use um, you know, your large apps, especially for mobile or web. It does a whole lot of authorization and security out of box. Works really well with uh, Amazon Cognito, and you're able to do a lot of uh, authentication and authorization with that. And it also simplifies a lot of development. So that's another one uh, alongside SAM. In terms of data, we are using DynamoDB with GraphQL. So that is with uh, AppSync, another good service that allows you to just use your regular DynamoDB, but now as a GraphQL database. And that makes queries a lot more powerful and efficient. In terms of authentication, we are using Cognito. In terms of messaging, we are using Lambda step function. And so this is really an orchestrator for tying up a bunch of different Lambdas, and we're using SNS to pass the message between the Lambdas. But all of these components don't make this production grade. They just make this fancy. The only thing here that makes this production grade is this uh, category on uh, bottom left, all the automation and monitoring. So Amplify, we talked about that. CDK is the cloud development kit, another from AWS that simplifies and packages a whole lot of foundational elements together. Of course, cloud formation, that's always at uh, the core. And then we're using X-Ray, which is really essential when you have a lot of microservices that you want to do tracing and do troubleshooting and debugging. X-Ray gives you really good insights with Lambda microservices. And CloudWatch for your logging. You also have end-to-end -end testing built into this. Finally, and most importantly, this is all, all of these different units. It's all one-click deployment. So it's these things that make any serverless application production grade serverless. Now it's ready. Now you can deploy this in any AWS cloud with just a click of a button and then just come in and change a couple of things here. Okay, let me just show you what this looks like. All right. So it starts with uh, Amplify. This is just the homepage of Amplify, great for mobile and web applications has a lot of customization built in. It simplifies your deployment a lot. You can just hook it up to a GitHub. That's what I've done in this case. It's coming in from my GitHub and it builds it, deploys it. So let's look at what uh, the status is. I did this last night. So this is the application that I deployed. And I can look at uh, my application. So it tells me the exact status. It breaks it down into the front end and the back end components. Let me just give you a quick tour because some of these things are really insightful. So I can look at uh, my provision stage and I can see how that, all of the steps that it kind of performed for me behind the scenes, if there was any failures, I could see that. Same for my build, I could see the logs coming on from there. I didn't have any test here. And this is a deployment script. But the feature that I really uh, think is powerful is the verify. Now, because this is a web app, it's a user interface, the keys, you want to see how it looks on different devices. Now, I don't have so many devices, but Amplify can run this on different devices and give you a screenshot so you have an idea of how this app looks. For example, here I can see that it looks fine on iPad Air 2, but iPhone 7 and these devices, it's a little bit, the button needs to be aligned well, so there's spacing on the right. So now I can detect those issues thanks to the screenshot capability of Amplify. So all of this was just front end. I have the same thing in back end. I can see what are the different things it has done for me. This is the last status. I can look at the APIs that it has created. I have these APIs right here. I can also open this up in AppSync, which I'll do in a second. And I can see what the authentication looks like. And I have my user pool created in Cognito, and I can create more users as well. All right, let's just look at the user interface. So this is the app that has been deployed. It's running. 
It's running on S3. The app itself is serverless, so it's running on just S3. We routed through CloudFront. But there are no servers running, obviously, anywhere. I got my profile here where I can set my preferences for luggage or my dietary. And I can see my bookings, which I don't have any right now. So if I were to just come in here and let's say look for some flights between Boston and Dubai, I'm able to find this flight. And if I were to search for any other flight, it will not show up because I have only added one flight here for the demo. And I can come in here and add other details. And this is the uh, Stripe integration, which should fail because I haven't set up a Stripe. And okay. So this information is coming from a DynamoDB right here. I can see that there are three tables. There's a loyalty table, there's a booking, there's a flight table, and I have one flight that I just added. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And if I wanted to add another flight, I could either create an item or I've actually created APIs for this with GraphQL that I can just use to spin up a flight for me. So I can come in here and I can go in AppSync. So AppSync is what you use in lieu of uh, web sockets. It's what you need for dynamic web apps. And I can come in here and I can look at the different schemas that I have. I have my booking and here's what it looks like for creating a flight. These are the things I need. Creating a booking, these are the items I need. It's already set up. I can come and look at my data sources in DynamoDB. And then I can come in here in my query and I'm already logged in. And then this is where I can uh, fire off the query to create a flight for me. And this is what it looks like. So this is the query that I'm uh, firing off, Austin to Dubai. It now adds it to DynamoDB. I can come in here and refresh this, and now I have this flight. So if I were to go here, look for this flight, no results found. Let's go back here. Okay. I think it's because your departure date, I didn't know. When I pasted this, I didn't do this right. So let me fix that departure date. Let's say it's for tomorrow, and then arrival date is for 12. So I can fix that. I can add it again. This should have also fixed that. Okay, and it's created another one. And I'll look for a flight. And I have that flight. That's how this app works, and it's it's all one single thing. So after this demo, I obviously don't want to leave this running. If I had to delete this, I can simply roll back and every single thing that it has created for me, which if I look in my just my lambdas, right? So I got 20 different lambda functions because some of them are grouped as step functions. I saw some polyglot. I have some lambdas in Node.js 10. I have some in Python 3. Some of these are really large, 17 MB, 26 MB. Some of these are just 543. So this, all of this will be automatically deleted. Now let me show you what truly makes this production ready, besides the fact that this is all uh, through a single script, is that I can also come in here in X-Ray and I can look at the traces of my different microservices that I'm calling. This is from last time I'd done this. X-Ray, I can also refresh this and create a service map and it's just computing that from the last five minutes, whatever we ran, it takes a couple of seconds and it's done that. So it's telling me these are the different services that I clicked on and what that looks like. Just from a previous execution, I have that open which tells you all the different microservices you have. So this kind of goes back to the earlier question, how do you do your multiple microservices? This is going to give you the view and also let you know what is the sequence of microservices that are being called, what are the durations your microservices and your functions are running. So if you had to troubleshoot, it will give you enough contact to know where the issue is. Now these all different aspects are essential because in your traditional applications, a lot of these things are usually built in at the same place. But here, you have multiple components here, so you have to explicitly add these integrations. And to just avoid skipping on anything, you can uh, use one of these frameworks to uh, do the job for you, to do all the foundational work for you. And this demo is also available on GitHub if anyone wants to go and play with it. So just to kind of summarize how we make any serverless app production grade, there are really just four key drivers. And the most important of them is automation. You have to automate. If you are writing more than one Lambda, then you have to automate because you don't want to manage that individually. You do automation of everything. You do automation of your um, backups and disaster recovery. You do automation of your CICD development, deployment, testing, APIs, provisioning, every single thing. And using one of these tools, you can really get far without giving it a whole lot of new thought. The other important thing is uh, monitoring. This is an aspect, like I mentioned, is often ignored. 
you got to set up the tracing tools. You got to be able to do a lot of the monitoring locally. And you have to integrate with uh, the right kind of tools, whether it's X-ray for Lambda or whether you want to use third-party tools like IOPipe or anything that uh, your organization is using, your clients are using. This is also really powerful, especially for large teams where collaborative development is happening. You don't want to push code that is not tested. You don't want to test it on cloud. You want to test it here using SAM and other frameworks. You're able to mimic AWS environment to a really good extent in terms of even DynamoDB and a Lambda. You can dockerize all of that and you can just test it, find your bugs before you push it out. Security itself can be its own session, but I did, I do want to put it here because you want to think about that explicitly depending on the kind of data you're storing, whether it's encryption or the guardrails that you need, what kind of policies and access requirements that you need. The kicker is really this. In a production-ready app, you will have hundreds of lambdas and step functions just firing your events. You want to get into a no-ops state, which is where a lot of these operations, the DevOps, are now automated to an extent that it almost feels like no ops. And so you've got to do that if you want to make sure your applications can be sustainably tested, deployed, and monitored in a production grade environment. So that's really all the material that I wanted to cover. If we have any questions, we can take them now. 